Sing a Song, How Lift Every Voice and Sing Inspired Generations by Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Keith Millett. Before you were born, a girl learned a song. Her principal, James Weldon Johnson, and his brother, John Roseman Johnson, had written the hymn for a celebration of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. The girl wanted to make them proud. She hung the song on her way home from school. She practiced it as she did her chores. On the big day, February 12, 1900, she was part of a choir 500 strong. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang, And she kept on singing as she grew up. She taught it to her students when she became a teacher. She crooned it to her husband as they journeyed from Jacksonville, Florida to a new life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang it when she rocked her baby boy to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. He listened to her hum it as she dreamed of being able to teach again in her new home. He heard his daddy sing it when the days at the steel mill wore him down. Then one day, he stood in the choir loft and gazed at the glowing faces. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang, and he kept on singing. He sang it when he came back from World War II and faced discrimination. He sang it when he joined the NAACP. He sang it with his wife and to his baby daughter as he rocked her to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. She sang it each morning at school. Then came the day that broke the nation's heart. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The next morning, she saw her teacher cry. Sobs replaced singing, then whimpers and silence. Who would lead them now? The song whispered an answer. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. And she kept on singing. She sang it at protests for equal rights and when she and her friends were jailed. She sang that song in her heart each time she won or lost a case as a lawyer. She sang it to her baby boy as she rocked him to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned the song. Every family reunion opened with that anthem. He sang because he had to at first, but then something changed. He saw the awe in his grandparents' faces, saw the pride in his mamas and pops. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang, and he kept on singing. 
He sang it at his college graduation and when he opened his first business. He sang it at rallies to stand up against racism. He sang it holding his wife's hand at black history programs and when he rocked his daughter to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. And on another big day, September 24th, 2016, she stood in a crowd of thousands along with her mama and daddy. President Obama, the First Lady, and generations of one family rang the Freedom Bell. A dream born a century ago to honor black lives and contributions had finally come true. The National Museum of African American History and Culture was officially open. With the Washington Monument piercing the sky, that little girl stared at the bronze building, majestic as a crown. As bells around the nation tolled in triumph, she heard a voice rising too. Clear and strong, it was a song she heard her parents sing. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang, And you know what? That song is part of you. Sing when you score a victory. Sing when the tough times get you down. Sing and think of all the people who sang before you, who carried on and pushed forward even when everything was against them. Sing and remember, they never stopped believing. Keep singing, keep pushing, keep passing it on. Keep on keeping on.